would like to say this morning is good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning and uh, uh, as I was finishing up the song service I said uh, everybody say amen and on me uh, uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't talking about it in a, in a, a way that uh, the women could speak out uh, but the thing of it is we can say amen in our hearts amen and uh, you know sometimes uh, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you and, and deals with you, you uh, you get beside yourself sometimes. But I was just thinking about that. That song was singing about the mighty gulf that God has spanned. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't realize, and I don't know if we ever will realize, maybe when we get to heaven and uh, always explain to us, we'll understand more about that mighty gulf that He did span because, hey, it cost Him His Son. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there was a there was a mighty gulf that he had to expand, expand over, and to reach us. And uh, I sometimes when I get to singing there, I get to thinking about uh, how great it is and how how great a song it is to mm -hmm. to sing. We want to study some this morning in the book of Matthew, in the thirteenth chapter. If you would turn there, <clears throat> we want to. It seems like. I don't know, but it seemed yesterday as we were all sitting there at the house and as we were uh, fellowshipping and visiting, it uh, seemed like that these these parables came into uh, into the conversation, and uh, I had already uh, been studying them some, and I thought, well, uh, if they keep on, they are uh, they'll discuss my lesson, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, that. Uh, it's a wonderful chapter, and it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful wording here. Some parables that we need to look at real close and try to study. And so, in the book of Matthew, in verse one of chapter thirteen, the same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and he <clears throat> he had he had come out of the synagogue there, and if you read back over chapter twelve, where he had told them a lot of these things that. Uh, that they they didn't understand and and he had talked to them uh, even in even as he was there his mother uh, and he, and some of the people that his brethren and all uh, stood without desiring to see him and uh, he explained to those that were he were talking to who is my mother uh, mother and who is my brother and he pointed to the church to those that he was talking to. And so he is trying to explain to them, and he went on after that, <clears throat> and he spoke this parable to them, and he says uh, and, uh, in verse 2, And a great multitude were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parable, saying, <clears throat> Behold, a sower went forth, to sow. Now, <clears throat> he used this to try to get across a message to these uh, people about salvation, about grace, uh, and he used a, he used an example of a man out in a field sowing seed. And uh, of course, the seed represents, I believe, the Word of God, and that is what is, is must be sown in order for. Uh, us to hear or for us to hear it but uh, you know he says in verse 4 and when he sowed some seed when when he sowed some seed fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up now I wanted to uh, look a little bit more closer on this wayside and uh, uh, I, I, I looked and I read a definition on it, but it is an uncultivated strip of land. It is a place that uh, briars and weeds and bushes, and it's shaded by trees. It's along the side of a road, and these is where these seed fell. And he was trying to tell them that this is the condition 
of a heart that will not receive seed. Mm -hmm. Now these seed, <clears throat> these seed that fell on this way side sideway or wayside laid there. Wasn't any they there was nothing done for them. There was no preparation made for the soil. There was no there was nothing there and 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 what what I'm wondering about is how why did the sower sowed them there? Because more than likely he was sowing a field with a side of it that had been conditioned. Mm -hmm. And these seed here that fell there, I believe they represent the predest predestination of Jesus Christ or God of who that he will and who that he won't receive or who that he will call and who he won't call. These seed have no chance whatsoever uh, of, of doing anything and they just laid there. They didn't sprout. Uh, they didn't, uh, nothing. But it says here, and when he sowed some seed, fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up. Now, uh, in, 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 some, in one of the, it, this is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and in some of them it refers to this fowl as the devil. And we notice here that it says here the fowls came and devoured them up. And we know that the, the Bible says, uh, I think it is in 1 Peter there, that the devil <clears throat> is a roaring lion Bad. seeking whom he may devour. Right. Now, this is the danger part of not having a cultivate, cultivated uh, heart or a cultivated piece of ground that uh, is not prepared for the seed. And it's the same way with the church. The church needs to start cultivating a, a heart or a soul, a spiritual being, when they are of a small age and have them cultivated right. and have that ground prepared as to when the seed time comes or when the sowing comes and when the Holy Spirit speaks to them, they will be ready to receive that seed and it will have a place to rest upon to where that it can grow or it can sprout and grow. Now we'll see this happen in one of the things of the good ground. And this is why I, I see this morning that that is so important for children, regardless of if they're six months old or if they're ten years old or if they're ten, whatever. They need to hear God's word. Amen. They need to hear it taught. They need to hear it preached. And listen, you say, well, they're sitting there fiddling around and they're not paying attention. Listen, they are. Mm -hmm. They do. They do hear it. They do remember it. Listen, their little mind is so much finer than mine and yours. After you reach up an older age, they grasp stuff so quick. And if you don't believe it, you just watch them. They remember it. They mm -hmm. remember it Amen. from time to time. And so it's very important, I believe, this morning for children, when they're, when they're born into this world, they need to be sitting with their mama. And when they get, when they get to a certain age, they need to be where that they can be taught. And then listen, they need to come right back and hear the preaching of God's word. Amen. And that that can cultivates that, that spiritual soul to whereas when they hear that word, then it'll be ready. And so he said here, some, <clears throat> uh, and when he had sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. What a, what a pitiful thing it is. And we know, I, and I know, I understand this morning that that none of God's blood is wasted. I know that, but listen, God's blood is put on those that are ready to ex receive it. So uh, that, that, that condition still is, is needful in any man's or person's life. Now he says in verse five, then some, of, some fell on stony places where they had not much earth. Now again, we see something lacking here uh, in in the in the bed of the preparing of a bed for the seed, because notice it says here some fell on stony places where there was they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. Now here's the thing with with seed. Sometimes listen, 
uh, and, and you can apply to a Christian or to a person that comes to church and he hears God's word and automatically he grasps it. He grasps it and he says, oh, that's good because why? Well, it's not a spiritual thing, but he is surrounded by brothers and sisters that know the Lord. Now, when the word of God comes to those that are here in the church or whatever church, listen, there is, there is, a, there is a receiving of it. There is an amen to it, and there should be a whole lot of amens to right. it. But the thing of it is, this one that's over here that's on stony ground, listen, he hears that. He gets excited. He says, oh, and, and maybe something is read for that, uh, you know, uh, uh, pertaining to something that he will receive. And he says, oh, I want that. And here he, here he is, he's in very shallow earth. And automatically, it, com it comes up. But listen, there's no root there. Right. There's no teaching there. The, for that one that comes and says, yeah, I'll, I'm going I'm to run to the altar and be saved. Listen, so many times, these false professions get people a whole lot worse off than what they are. Right. They're better off to sit in that pew and never make a move until the Lord moves them. Because listen... The, the flesh gets excited. The flesh gets excited when it feels like, hey, I'm going to get something out of this deal. And you can think what you want to about it, but the flesh is a deceiving part of you, and right. it is of me, because all it ever looks at, it don't look at the, it don't look at the part where that, uh, uh, of the salvation and all that, but it looks at what it can receive. The biggest majority of the time when 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 people are uh, when pe people are getting up and shouting and singing and these big saying you see them and people get up running around clapping their hands listen people it's not of the Lord mm -hmm. a lot of the times it's not of the Lord it's a fleshly move mm -hmm. and here I believe this is typifying a fleshly move when it says some fell on, uh, on stony places where they had not much earth and uh, uh, and forthwith they sprung up. And I believe that's what he's trying to get across to them. But notice, in, and then when the sun was, was up, they were scorched. Mm -hmm. When the heat of the sun catches a little plant down here that's just sitting on top of the ground, and you, you can see, you've seen it in gardens and things like that, where that they're uh, a bad place in the garden or something like that, and they're all is just sitting on top of it. It, it, can't, it can't stand uh, two days without some water. It, it's got to have uh, a, a special nourishment. So that's the same thing it is with this, this, this person that is sitting, that makes that profession that is not, not what he's, he needs to do. And he's making, he's making, actually making a false profession is what he's doing. And here, here's what he's, and, and this sun, or the heat, or the, uh, uh, and we'll see it a little bit later on, more so, but listen, there is things required at this, of, of people that have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Uh, you take one, one wants to be, he said, he comes up, he said, I've been saved. Well, do you want to follow the Lord in baptism? Well, I don't know about that. Do you? And then, if the, do you want to be a member? No, I don't want to be. I don't be. See, there's so many things that goes on in life. And listen, when when a, a person is truly saved, I believe this morning that he's happy in the Lord, and I believe he's happy to say yes. That's that's my desire. I, I want that as soon as I was saved. I wanted to be baptized. I want to be a member with y'all because. I've got something here that I haven't gotten over else. Mm -hmm. and, and these are the things that the little plant here likes. He, all he's doing is setting up on top of that ground and he's not getting any, any of this nourishment. And so what happens is, and because that they have no root, they wither away. Right. <clears throat> now, and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Now again here we see there is a lack of cultivation. You plant, you plant anything out here, uh, and, and, and factor that you just plant it out there and never go back to it. And listen, the grass will take it, the briars will grow up right. around it, and choke it out. 
Now, I know you say, well, they've got stuff to do better with that. Well, we're, we're, we're talking about spiritual things this morning. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, they haven't got the thing that will that will take care of that right now. And I don't believe that the uh, only, only thing that, that's going on that will take care of that is the love of God and, and, and the, the right way to uh, be cultivated and the right way to uh, hear His Word proclaimed. Now, he says here, and, and when they, they, the, they, the sun fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them, and others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. And he says, who hath ear to hear, let him hear. Amen. Now, by this, by this here, what he's saying, and he says, those that fell on the good ground brought forth fruit. And this is a way that you can identify a Christian. You can identify a Christian by the fruity bears. Uh, and, and you can tell you can tell if he's if he's putting on a pretense about it and if he's if he if he says I'll do this and you know he don't want to do it. And that's that's a lot of times uh, People will say, yeah, I'll, I'll do this and I'll do that for the church. And then when it comes down to it, they won't do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, But anyway, I want you to see here. But he says, who hath an ear to hear, let him hear. And now, his disciples, notice here, and the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parable? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Right. So these people, these people that he's describing, those that those that uh, 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 were sold to the wayside, those that was on the on the rock, those that were on the, on the shallow ground, listen, they are not God's people. They there never was. I don't believe they had the the ability to understand and and you can say what you will but listen i believe this morning that god gives his people right. the ability to understand i believe he gives them the ability to to uh have a desire to to study his word and these here these were never i don't believe ever called to be his right they they are the non-elect I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure of that. And, and, and of course, he says here, when he, when he told them this here, because it is given unto you to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Right. And so they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't understand it. They didn't have no chance. So notice in verse 12, For whosoever hath to him shall be given. Now, what, what have they got? They've got salvation. Mm -hmm. Now, notice. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that which he hath. And so, so we see here that, and, and, and you even even in this, you can remember the other parable, where that the the Lord or the the the, the ruler gave gave out. Uh, uh, monies to his his uh, his workers to let them put it uh, to work for him, and some come back and said, "Well, we took the five and got ten, and the other one said we got the two and got four, but this one, right? Give him that one, and listen, what did he do with it? He went and buried it mm -hmm. because why? Because he didn't trust his master. He said, "If I, I was afraid if I lost that, and I know the girl." Austrous man, you, 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 you wouldn't, I wouldn't have been in your grace. But listen, that's not the way it is. Amen. Because if God gives you something this morning uh, in your heart that you need to speak to someone, you do that. And if, and, if, and if they make fun of you, that's fine. Because listen, you've done what God says. And so this is the same thing I see here with this. Now notice in verse uh, 13. Therefore speak out of them in parable, because they seeing, see not, and hearing they hear not, do they, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, 
and seeing you shall see and shall not perceive. And listen, this is this is the same this is the same thing. Uh, and, and you know, in, in when you see people that are, are are in church, a lot of times all oh, they're just twisting and turning and, and turning and twisting and they they're not they're not they're not wanting to be there, sorry. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, uh, somebody right over the next side, Amen, Amen and and, and this guy over here in the world is he amen about it. But listen, so many times, so many times we that are in church and we're not getting a blessing out of that, we need to we need to get within ourselves and say, Lord, you help me with this because hey, I want to hear that word. I want to understand that word. And and so many people uh are sitting around you and enjoying it, smiling, and there you sit all grumpy and, and I don't know why. I just can't. I wish I was home. Hey, you need to get you need to get closer to the Lord. Amen. So these are some of the things that I I see in it, and some of the things that maybe that uh, it'll help you to try to understand. But he says here in verse fifteen, <clears throat> well, this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes Amen. for they see and your ears for they hear. And people this morning, this is something that... Uh, uh, that we ought to be able to rejoice in. Mm -hmm. Because I this morning know that when the Holy Spirit is 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 here and when he's when he's speaking and when he's working, you can tell it just as well when you get up here and start leading these songs or when you get up here and try to fix it. Listen, when the Holy Spirit is here and when he's working, it's altogether a different atmosphere. Right. And here uh, I believe this morning that we need to condition ourselves before we get to church and we've got all week to get ready a half a week to get ready for wednesday and we've got the rest of the week to get ready for for church on sunday and we need to be ready Amen. because uh if we had the opportunity to go to disneyland or uh to somewhere else big on a big vacation we would be preparing for a pretty good while we'd be worrying about how am I going to get enough money to go and, and what am I going to wear and, and all this and we'd be preparing for it mm -hmm. and so this is more important here this morning to be prepared for what we're going to hear Amen. and what we're going to say and what, how we're going to act than it is to go to any any big party and he said here uh, here these he explained to them that they uh, their heart is waxed close. It's, 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 it's calloused over. And uh, he says, their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted. And I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not hear, hear heard them. So this morning, we're getting to hear things Amen. that Elijah didn't get to hear. Right. Isaiah didn't get to hear them. Daniel didn't get to hear him by a long ways because he told Daniel, he said, you closed the book. Right. And so people, we should be on shouting ground this morning that we can, that we can hear uh, what God has, has got planned for us out there. And he said, blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Uh, now, in verse uh, 18, now notice what he's going to do. He's going to explain to them what he was talking about because I believe in one of the scriptures here in one of the lessons here that the disciples did not understand it either uh, what he was talking about but anyway hear ye therefore in verse 18 hear ye therefore the parable of the sowers when any one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not 
Then cometh the wicked one, the devil, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Right. And so we understand now, and I, and I tried, to, tried to explain a little bit, but listen, he's always there. He's here. He's everywhere. And he's trying, he's trying to take away from you this morning by putting thoughts into your mind about thinking about different things and, and closing your ears. And he's, he's catching that word and he's pulling it away from you. And it's the same way, especially with those that are lost. Mm -hmm. He is, he is double, he's, he, 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 he's double strong there because he don't want them to hear anything. Right. Because listen, he does not want to see one soul saved. Mm -hmm. He wants, he would, he would be happy. He would be, well, he wouldn't be happy, but he would, I started saying he'd be happy if he seen every soul in hell and all, he'd never be happy. Because he's a devil. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, that's what his that's what his goal is, is to deter anyone, keep anyone from going to heaven that he can. And so he knows that, that he's got a short time, and so like the Bible says, he's a roaring lion. But he says in verse uh, twenty about but he that receiveth the seed in two stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon, or at once, with joy, received it. And that's like the one that I was trying to explain to you about, uh, that they come to church one time, and everybody shouting, he jumps up and says, I'm saved, and, and I want this, and I want that. Listen, that's what he's talking about here. Mm -hmm. this morning. So he said, yeah, in verse 21, yet hath he got Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. And when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Right. And, and this offended uh, is, is, uh, is something that, uh, uh, if you remember there in uh, uh, where is it? Uh, the, the, the the Bible says about the the one that is offended to pluck out his eye if if, if he's offended to pluck, because if his eye offended pluck it out and here the man here is offended and uh, he is he is upset at what he what the law says or he's upset at what the Bible says and and uh, he's displeased with anything. Most of the time, what God's word says, mm -hmm. and so he, he, you know, and he, and and what happened is he, he just, he just can't be pleased, and uh, so this is what, this is what this is about. He hath, yet he hath not root in himself. Yet he hath not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arise, because of the word, by and by he is offended. And then notice here, he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world right. and the deceitfulness of the rich riches choke the word and he become unfruitful. Now you say, well, he becomes unfruitful. Was he fruitful? No. He's never been fruitful because he... he Notice here, if you read this careful, and he, and, and then the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches. So, does that sound like he's ever bearing fruit? Mm. No. And he never will. Right. Because his love is towards the world, and as long as his love is towards the world, he's not going to bear fruit. You're right. And so, here he, we see here, and so, he becomes unfruitful, and uh, uh, he's, he is... He is no he is no help to himself and he's not saved, he's not and he's not a child of God. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word. Number one, he heareth the word, the most important thing, and understandeth it. Number two, that's a that's a must with the conditioning of the ground. And which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some 
a hundredfold, some do, some write 64, and some 30. Right. And so there is going to be fruit bearing among God's people, right. among God's children. And, 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 and you know, a lot of times these old fleshly eyes of ours can't see it. And it don't say that they're going to all bring a, a hundredfold. But some will bring some, some will some. And, and you know, that is that is the thing here that, that, that really stands out in this one here is that he hears the word and he understands it and which also beareth fruit. These are some of the main things that the Christian needs to base his life on. He needs, to, he needs to check himself out. Am I, am I hearing God's word? Or am I just uh, letting it go out one ear and another? Or when I study God's word, am I listening? Am I hearing? And listen, am I bearing fruit? And uh, again, he says, uh, am I bringing forth a hundredfold or a fiftyfold? And he says, hearing the word, understanding it, which also beareth fruit. And so these are the these are these are some of the things that I I seen in the parable and. Uh, there's a lot more that, that you can pick up on if you'll go to Mark and Luke and read that scripture because it reads it just a little bit different. It puts it in a different light just a little bit and it, it describes some of the things a little bit closer, but it's all it, it, it boils down to the same thing that, that these all were seed that were sold in uncultivated ground. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a chance. Won't have a chance. And look at it this way. In these false denominations, these false churches, mm -hmm. where you get up and read one of these revised versions mm -hmm. and preach from a revised version and he preaches hell to ice house and he can, I mean, they can mind her do it with the revised version. Right. Because, uh, uh, well, anyway, they can do it. And... They don't never hear the word. They hear a word, but it's not the true word of God. Amen. So anyway, food for thought. Y'all think about that. Pray about it. Pray for me. Pray for our country. Thank Amen. You.